Hello everyone and welcome to the 60X Business Show. My name is Christian Kitumaini and together with my guest, we shall have different conversations about business, entrepreneurship and life. This is the show you've been waiting for. Stay tuned. In today's conversation, I have an amazing entrepreneur. He's the founder of Highland School, which is a nursery and primary school providing quality education in an innovative way to young boys and girls. And in the studio, he's now than Edward Munyaburanga. Edward, welcome, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Tumaine. How are you today? Very good, thank you. It's really a pleasure to have you. Pleasure is mine too, thank you. Wonderful. So on the 60X, we'll be spinning the wheel mm -hmm. and randomly we select a number and from there I will ask you a question. Are you ready? Sure. Over to you whenever you're ready. What is your lucky number? Um, seven. Okay. Let's see if you'll be able to get seven during the course of your... You just missed it. But eight is closer yeah, to seven, yeah, no worries. Very far. Wonderful. Um, can you share with me uh, more who is Edward uh, growing up? What were your dreams? And how did you end up in education? Thank you so much. Uh, that's an interesting question. When I was growing up, actually, um, I always had a spirit of helping other people. Mm. So I remember when I was very young, I was really known to helping other children and, you know, intervening whenever there were conflicts and people were fighting. And so, I mean, I'm, I was always, should I say, peacemaker. Mm. And so that, you know, grew up in me. And um, in 1998, well, actually when I was completing my high school, I had a vision. Mm. I had a vision and... Uh, that was, you know, to, to, to be an asset. It was really begging me to be an asset to my community. Mm. So since that time, I continued at the university, but I had that in me. So I, I struggled really to know how can I become an asset. It really took me time to, to, to identify what being an asset is in the, in the true sense of that. And so growing, you know, when I completed the university and uh, I started working, that thing now started coming back in me. I said, okay, so what can I do, you know, to make sure that I help my community. I become a real asset to my community. And so that's how I started a school. Mm. So I started a school in, uh, way back in 2009. I was still employed, and, uh, but because of the, that, that, that zeal and the, and the vision that I had, you know, I, I ventured into uh, the, 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 a private school. So that's how I started, and um, by God's grace, because it was a vision that God had given me, so he really provided. I started from a very, very humble beginning, mm. very humble, you know, uh, from uh, premises that are, we were renting, mm. that were really not very fancy. Mm. <laughs> uh, but uh, because I, I had that in me, that I, have, I had to contribute to my community, whatever challenges I encountered, there were, I want to promise you there were many, mm. but I was always, you know, assured that uh, I was going to achieve uh, success. Mm. And so we started actually with uh, only 20 students. Wow. Just 20. And uh, among the 20, I think only 11 were paying and, and so 9 were sponsored. Mm. So we started like that in the premises that were rented. And, um, but I always had, uh, like, I wanted to do something for my community. I never had to do something cheap. Mm. So although it was really, uh, I, I didn't have money by that time, I didn't have any sponsor. But yet, I decided from the beginning that I was going to have something quality. Mm. If I was going to help my community, then that means they will really get something that probably they couldn't have afforded if uh, uh, that wasn't my contribution. And so we started uh, just like that. And uh, by God's grace, you know, we had uh, parents who trusted us. Mm. You know, they trusted us. We, 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 we started really uh, with very very limited resources, the classes were not good, but we were able at least to get teachers. Mm. And uh, so that's how generally I started. And uh, when, I, when I started, it was like uh, everyone else was discouraging me. They said, but I think 
maybe although you have the, the, the passion and the vision and everything, but maybe this is not the time. Mm. Why, why don't you just <laughs> slow down a little bit and, and maybe just you know, try to accumulate a few, some resources and you know, get enough money. But I, I couldn't wait. I couldn't wait. I remember one day, actually, it was uh, a year before when I started planning this. I had like three sleepless nights. I mm. couldn't sleep, you know, mm. I, working on, the, <laughs> on a business plan that was way, 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 way beyond my, my, my capacity, even if I had to sell everything that I owned, mm. but I still did it. And so um, we, we, when we started, uh, uh, a, a few people, you know, uh, came and they trusted us, as I said, uh, at, least, uh, at least 11 mm. students. There were around, I think, eight, eight parents. So they came and uh, we started like that. So from there, we, we, we continue growing. And uh, because of the quality of education they were giving, mm. now many people started now trusting us and coming. Mm. We started growing really. Our curve was very, very, you know, going high up to today. Our curve is still, you know, going upwards, you know, since this is now the 13th year. Mm. But our curve, the growth curve has been going upwards since then. So because of the, of the, of the, the quality of teachers, but I, I should say that also because of the, of the passion that I have for this, you know. Mm. I didn't start it as a business. And I always, you know, struggle explaining this to people. <laughs> mm. I know most of the people don't understand this, but uh, uh, in education, at least for me, but I'm sure for others as well, education is not a business. Mm. You can't start education with uh, the aim, as we, we all know the, the bottom line, the principle, I mean, the, the profits. Mm. If you start education with uh, the intention or the aim of making profits, you are likely to fail. Mm. You are likely to fail because education actually is, is, is more than just earning money. So this is something that you're investing in people. So the, mm. the reward for education should be social transformation, community transformation. You see people changing, you see people, their lives change. Mm. I can't tell you how much I'm, 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 I'm happy when I, when I see some of the students. Those actually who started there in P1 or even maybe top class, by now they're in the university. So when I meet these people, they are really, you know, amazing young men and women, you know, mm. who are, some of them actually are going to study abroad and you, you meet them and they are really challenging you there. Mm. I, I, can't, I can't explain to you how much I yeah. feel this one. It is, it is more than you can ever, you can't get enough money actually to, to pay for this. So uh, that was my journey. So we started like that. Currently, we are almost 700 students. Mm. And so, uh, and that was because of persistency. We have met challenges, several challenges, financial, human resources, as you know. Uh, by the time we started, the, the, the system had switched to English and we mm. didn't have, you know, many people who were competent in uh, teaching English language. So we had to outsource from uh, neighboring countries. And so we really had, we faced challenges, we still face them, but um, because of the, of the passion, because of the vision, because of the, that drive, you know, of seeing people changing, of seeing my community, you know, the community around me happy and changing. When you see it, a parent comes, you know, they didn't have where to put their children and the other day she's really a fancy, wonderful school. They, they, they you know, Sometimes they always call me and say, but <laughs> the, what you have done for us, mm. we, we, can't, we can't get enough money you know, to reward you. Mm. So that, that's, that's what has been actually uh, keeping uh, us moving, moving. And uh, uh, as, as I told you, from the, the rented premises that were uh, not in really good shape, we were able actually uh, to have our own premises, mm. which are good looking. I wish you would come and... Uh, and see them, or maybe one day I will invite you to, mm. to come there and see. But uh, yeah, uh, at least everyone will be proud of studying from there or even working there, or, or at least partnering. And uh, relating with the school is now actually like everyone is proud of relating with the school, mm. whether a parent or, or, or a worker or a student. But back, <laughs> no one ever wished actually to be, <laughs> to be related or to, mm. you know, with the school.
Wonderful. What's really a humble journey and beginning? It's, it's really amazing and, and inspiring. I would like to understand, I know a lot of sectors have been affected by COVID-19, including education. What are some of the learnings you've acquired um, from this pandemic that's going to help you make some future decisions? Thank you so much. Uh, COVID-19 uh, was, and I, I think it is still uh, a lesson to very many people. You know, it has given actually more lessons than I think uh, any other thing, any other pandemic, at least as far as I know. It has really given uh, me personally uh, lessons that are really so uh, critical and are so important to, to me as a person, but also to the business or, or, or Highland uh, as, as an institution. So one of the, of the lessons that we, we, we learned from the pandemic is that we, we never think, take things for granted. Mm. I learned that, you know, there's nothing to be taken for granted. Because we, normally people used to say, you know, education is a, a sector that has very few risks. People say that. But it was now, you know, discovered, or it was, it came to our understanding that uh, there is nothing that is risk-free. So when all of a sudden we had uh, in March that schools were closing, no one ever expected that. Mm. You know, it was a Friday and then we were told, I think it was a Saturday, they said, okay, no going to, 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 to back to school. Schools are closed, of course, and many other businesses. Everything was just all of a sudden shut down. So uh, one lesson was nothing should be taken for granted. Mm. Nothing should be taken for granted. So that's, that, that, that's very, very important. In other words, even the success, even what we have today, should not be taken for granted. And therefore, you know, we always have to be ready. So that now pushes you. If you know nothing is taken for granted, that means you, whatever you have, whatever you are in, that means it, it, it has to be a springboard. You know, it has to be something that upon which you know you, you, you stand to plan and you know, make sure you, you improve it and, uh, and always have a plan B. Mm. Plan B is very, very important. So uh, as a school, when we, when we had to, to, to stop and everything shut down all of a sudden, uh, two things came in my mind. I said, how are these, the workers, how are they going to survive? Mm. At least I would, I would think that probably for myself, I, I wouldn't fail to survive. But, for a period I didn't know, but of course, at a certain point, I would also be definitely affected. But I started thinking about my staff. I mean, the people that we work with, my family. Actually, we, Highland, we, we, we call ourselves a family. We don't say it's a business. So I started thinking about them. How are these people? It was actually in the middle of, of the month. Mm. And so I started thinking of how these people are going to survive. How are these families going to survive? So psychologically, it, that, that really tortured me. It tortured me because I didn't have enough resources. I didn't have enough, uh, you know, savings for the school, you know, to be able to take these people through the, the unknown period. Mm -hmm. By that time, we didn't know when it was going to open. Although in the beginning, we thought it was just maybe one week, three weeks. But even just there, I started thinking of how uh, these people are going to survive. Yes, yeah, so the second aspect was our children. So you, we, we love our children in such a way that uh, when we, even during the holidays, we, we miss them. I, at least I, for one, I miss, I miss the students because they are my friends. They, they love me, I love them. So I, 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 I was worried of missing them for such a time that I didn't know when it was going to come back. And so, but also worried about uh, the, how they are going to be able to, 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 to continue studying, mm. you know. At that time, we didn't have uh, um, a, a, the, the, the online studies. So I was worried how they were going to continue their studies during uh, uh, the lockdowns. So generally, uh, the, the COVID uh, pandemic, uh, those were the challenges. But uh, now, during the, uh, those, those challenges, we now found out you know, a way to, to handle. So we started helping, of course, our, our, our staff. As, as we could, of course they suffered, but the students now, we devised now ways of uh, helping them while they were home. 
So this is when we started now working on WhatsApp, you know, uh, helping them, sending videos and um, online platforms, different mm -hmm. online platforms. So, I mean, that again, you know, created another opportunity, another aspect of the study. You mm -hmm. know, as, as you see, the world, where the world is going, it is going digital. Mm -hmm. And so, as a lesson, actually, we, we were taught that uh, teaching is not only when students are in class. You can teach them when they are not there. So you mm -hmm. can use other platforms like uh, Google Class and other things, you know, to be able still to dispense and, you know, to teach these students. So uh, generally we, 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 we learned, we don't take anything for granted, but also we, we discovered new other ways of teaching other than just the, 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 the classic way or the, the traditional way of having them in class. So uh, that was it and we, we have grown, even during the COVID, we have grown as, as a school, as a as Highland community, we have grown. We have become stronger, we, we have devised ways of uh, working together and uh, helping each other even during the hard times. So it has really cemented uh, us as, as, as a community, as, as, as a family, Highland family. So, you know, it has taught us different ways. Yeah, Interesting. Thank you. I, I love the way you were able to, uh, to pivot and navigate around the COVID-19 challenges. And for me, to get some of the insight and learnings that um, are helping you in the next coming days. It's really an amazing insight and continue doing so. Let's spin the wheel for another round of questions. You've got eight. <coughs> What's going to be your next lucky number? Is that number four? Four? Yeah, it should be. Oh, is it between three and four? It's yeah. between three and four. You spin again. Okay. <laughs> oh, that's smart. It's okay. It's okay? <laughs> Good four. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, can you share with me um, what are the requirements for a student to join uh, the school and what makes you uh, unique? Thank you so much. Uh, for a student to join Highland School, it is very easy. Mm. It's very easy. You need to be three years old and, uh, you know, to be willing to, to learn, you know, to, to be willing to, to learn. And uh, that is it. Just come, enroll, and uh, we welcome you in a family. So uh, for a student to come at Highland, it's, there are not much requirements, really. Mm. Yeah, the age requirement is very, very important for us because uh, uh, in education, we know you, these students need to, to reach a certain age, actually, to be able to, to, to go in a sort of a formal way. So uh, three years is the requirement, and um, the rest is uh, you, you just need to have uh, to... to, to to be willing actually to, to support the child. I mean, I'm talking as a parent, of course, now, because a three year, is, of course, depends on the parent and the teacher. And so for a parent, you just need to, 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 to be able to bring your child uh, at school. Mm. Or if you cannot, then we have uh, means, we have buses that pick uh, students from, uh, uh, from their communities. Mm. And so uh, at Highland, actually, I would say this is one of the, the unique places uh, that you, 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 you can bring your child to. Because at Highland, we provide breakfast. We provide, yeah, very, very heavy and, and, and good, uh, well-balanced uh, breakfast for students. That is included, actually, as part of the, of the package, of the, of the school fees package. And uh, other than that, actually, I should say, at Highland, we don't only teach uh, uh, the content, the, the, the academic content, as we say. We teach morals. We teach manners. So we, at Highland, we, we, we always say it is home away from home. So if your child is at Highland, you must know that they are, on, they are not only you know, learning how to read and write and uh, recite uh, rhymes and everything, but they are uh, learning manners, they are learning uh, culture, they are learning you know, behaviors. So we, 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 we always take our students, not just as students, but as human beings. We, we have uh, our, our motto or, or our vision is you know, to transform children into uh, lifelong learners. Mm. You know, these people who are just going to learn, not when they are in school, but who are just going to learn 
uh, continually. So we uh, at Highland, uh, e e e even the environment, when you come at Highland, you, the environment will just tell you this is real home. <laughs> the environment, you know, the way we welcome you, the way we, I mean, the, the people that you meet right at the gate, you know, you just meet people that will tell you this is what I was really missing. So I would really encourage people, I mean, who are uh, around uh, Nyamata. Highland is located actually in, uh, in, in, in Nyamata, Nyamata uh, the sector, just in the, in the city or town center there. So it's not very far, so it's, it's, it's just very near. And so really, um, uh, I call upon people who are in those areas, but we also actually start, started now venturing into Gahanga. So we have now some students who are coming from Gahanga. So if you're a parent there and you have children who are, whom you really want you know, to have the best education, as I said, we, we, we continue to grow it because parents were really trusting us. Even those that were in some other schools, they were coming because of the quality uh, of, 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 of teachers that we have. As I said, we, 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 we go beyond our local market in terms of uh, the, the, the teachers. We actually go get some, most of our teachers from around uh, the East African community. So this, and, and there we don't just get it because they are from outside, we get quality ones. So uh, we, we have very uh, quality teachers, and actually this is also evidenced by the, the results that we get in the national exams. Mm. If you can check, in the last uh, seven or eight years that we have, our students have uh, been doing the national exams, we have rarely got any student in the second grade. So they all come in the first grade. And actually last year, it was even very amazing where our last student yeah, got seven you know, the maximum is five, and so mm -hmm. the last got seven. So you can, you can see the, the quality of, uh, of, of, of education that we are giving. And uh, we have actually been getting this one from, uh, uh, from uh, parents who, are, who had their students there. When they go in uh, secondary schools, we get reports, we get really testimonies. Some of the people who didn't know Highland, it, is, you know, it has not been there for as long, as you, as you see. It is, uh, they always ask, where did these students come from? So we are always called that by, uh, by some headmasters and headmistresses from different schools saying, where is this school? How, how do you train these children? So they always ask us, how do you train these children? But you know, the secret is that we, 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 as, we don't just take these as just mere students. We take them as human beings and the leaders of tomorrow. We take them as the parents of tomorrow. We take them as, you know, people who are going to transform the community in, who, in which we are living. And so we go beyond just giving mathematics and science and SST and English and, or French. We go beyond that and, you know, we, 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 we take the role of a parent and a teacher and actually, should I say, as a leader, you know, we, we, we really make sure that we we, we get well-rounded children who are going to transform and change the community, as is our vision. So we, 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 we train our students, you know, in critical thinking skills. We train our students, you know, in, in, in culture. We train them in um, creativity, you know, not just cramming mathematics and science, but also, you know, being able, you know, to understand and comprehend the, the reasoning, you know, the, behind any theory. Yeah, so just at, at, at a young age, because I said we have uh, from three and up to 12 years, but even there, some people say, you know, you're overloading students, but no, they have the capacity, you know, to understand this. If we as grown up can understand it, then a child can actually understand even more because they are still flexible, their minds are still fresh, so you know, they are able to, 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 to understand. So at Highland, we, you know, we have a bigger package. It's not just... In other, in, like any other primary school, you just go to learn mathematics, English, you speak English fluently. We definitely do these things very well. That's why we, 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 we come uh, uh, among the best in the national exams, but we do much more than that. Okay, wonderful. And my follow-up question is, um, how do you see the Rwandan education evolving over time, and how is Highland contributing to that as well? Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Actually, I should say that uh, I'm, I'm really becoming very optimistic about uh, the future of education in Rwanda. 
uh, we education in Rwanda started really, you know, you know, peaking. The the fourth uh, uh, SDG is around quality education, and I like the way they both put it. Not <laughs> just education, because education has been there for ages, mm. but you know, it's now beyond education, and actually, also our Minister of Education is really aspiring and striving for that. So I I I, I see uh, education in Rwanda, you know, taking another another step. And, 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 and this is because, you know, there are people who have started investing in education. It was known that, I mean, people who are investing in education were those, they were, they were teachers, some of them didn't have enough money, like myself, and you saw they were really struggling. So education was just there, it was taken as mm, just anything, just have students go in class and they can study, provide, as long as you have the, 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 the materials to learn, so it was just that. But I have started seeing, you know, serious people, serious entrepreneurs, you know, who are really having the passion, but also, you know, they are becoming very innovative and, you know, having different ways of teaching, you know, some of them being uh, online, digital and different other things. So I, I really see education in Rwanda um, taking another step ahead. And uh, I, I should say that the future is really bright for, for, for us, for our children and also our grandchildren. And so as Highland, uh, our contribution, like it has been actually, we, we have been contributing greatly in, uh, in, in producing quality students yeah. for high school. We currently we don't have high, we don't have a secondary school, but we, we are planning. Uh, so that, that's actually one of the, of the ways that we, we want to contribute to the, to the, to the growing uh, education system and, 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 uh, in Rwanda. We, we want to also to upgrade to secondary school, such that our students that we have uh, graduated and given the values and, you know, given the, the, a, a solid foundation in education, we want to continue with them uh, in uh, high school. And why not tertiary? So we, mm. we think as Highland, uh, our vision is not just to stop at primary. We want to also to, uh, to start a secondary school, which uh, by God's will, it is not very far uh, from today. It's our plan, and we, we believe when we, when we dream, dreams come true. So it's our dream to have a, a secondary school and also a university one, one day. But the greatest contribution that actually has Highland, even where we are today before we go to those ones, is uh, making sure that we, we transform these children, you know, the mindset. You know, we, 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 we are trying to train these children just at an early age to know um, of the trends that are in the world, mm. you know. Like you, you, you talked a while ago about the COVID. You know, when COVID came, it opened people's minds. It opened people's minds. And so everyone now started seeing, you know, there's, we, we need to think differently. We need to, to, to get out of the box and, 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 and think. So in education as well, we are to, trying to get outside the box, not, not teaching as, as, as usual, we're also thinking of uh, having digital platforms to help our students, even during the holidays. But also, uh, even when they are at school, we, we, we are improving uh, the learning, the, mm. the learning experience, not just the, the, the local one of the Blackboard. So we are gradually improving that. You know, we are introducing uh, new methods of, of, of teaching. We are introducing... Uh, methods whereby children now engage and, uh, you know, they, they, it's like they teach themselves. So a teacher will just come as a facilitator, not just the, the traditional way, mm -hmm. they come as a facilitator. So in this way, we are helping uh, the students, you know, to, 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 to develop the skills of uh, critical thinking and uh, being mature and also, you know, guiding themselves, not just being fed. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. I like. I love the the whole long term vision and plan you having with the with the company, and the whole approach about education that you have, and it's 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 really amazing. Let me wrap up this conversation with my last question, um, and then you're gonna be brief with your answer. What are like two things you wish you knew before embarking on this journey as a, as an entrepreneur? Like two things you didn't know that you wish you knew uh, before starting. Thank you so much. Um, one of the things that I wish I knew uh, before I started the journey 
is um, that there were going to be very many challenges mm. uh, along the way. So when I started, I was just passionate. Uh, you know, I you know, had all that vigor and everything. I, I didn't know that the challenges that were there. So um, although I'm not very, uh, I don't regret actually not knowing them, probably. But uh, if I had known them, maybe I would have prepared better, mm. prepared better. Uh, the second thing that I, I, I wish I had known before is um, the dynamics in the education system. You know, mm. when I ventured into the education system, I didn't know the dynamics. You know, from the, the university, started working in a different sector, actually, very, very different. And, um, and, 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 and so I just ventured into it, but I didn't exactly know the dynamics of education. So I just grew, actually, by mm. doing. Mm. I, I, I learned by doing. I didn't study education. I just did it because of the passion that I had. So if I had known earlier, I would have actually done education instead of the things that I did. I did accounting and I, <laughs> I think I, I should not say I wasted time. Maybe I, I learned a few things, but if I had known, I think I should have done education instead. Wonderful. Those are amazing insights. And by that, we are coming to the end of this conversation. Thanks a lot for making it to the show. You're welcome. Thank you for inviting me. Wonderful. The conversation continues on social media using the hashtag 60xbusiness. I'll see you next time. Be safe. Wash, wash your hands. Wear your mask. Today's conversation, my guest was Edward uh, Munyabuanga, who is the founder of Highland School. Um, thanks a lot for watching and speak to you next week. Mm -hmm.